Okay, um, so today we're doing a Hall of Fame induction a little differently. So the Hockey Guy Hall of Fame consists of the players on the left. Tim Kerr, Chris Osgood, Tiger Williams, Sergei Zubov, Pat Verbeek, Asatikinen, Yuri Leitinen, uh, Curtis Joseph, Cliff Ronning, Alex McGillney, Rick Middleton, Rick Martin, Tim Thomas, Brian Gionta, Ray Whitney, uh, Scott Hartnell, Joe Malosh, Dale Hunter, and Rick Vive. So today I'm putting in both of the Courtnell brothers. And with Jeff and Russ, they had very different stories, and yet they get to very similar destinations when you look at their career totals. Uh, Jeff was undrafted, whereas Russ was a number seven overall pick in 1983, and then signs immediately with the Toronto Maple Leafs after that. Whereas, as an unrestricted overager, Jeff signs with the Boston Bruins July 6th of 1983. Now, July uh, signing, I'm sure no attention's really paid to Jeff Cortnell being signed. Uh, there may be some locals from Boston. And Boston didn't really use him that first year. Plays most of the year in the American League. Plays five games for Boston. No points in those games. Ross Cortnell plays 14 games in 83-84 with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Has three goals and nine assists in those games. 84-85, still with Boston. Jeff Cortnell. 64 games, 12 goals, 16 assists. On the other side of, uh, of of the ledger is Russ Cortnell, 69 games, 12 goals, 10 assists. And uh, 22 points. It says 32, it should be 22 points. Now, what's interesting is that, of course, Russ Cortnell is a number seven pick for, for Toronto. Would have been seen as, as kind of being an underachiever. And uh, Toronto at the time, their media was really hard on their prospects and on their players. Uh, and on the other side of it, Jeff Cortnell under virtually no pressure with the Boston Bruins. Uh, year three, uh, 64 games played again by Jeff. 21 goals, 16 assists, 37 points. So his first 20-goal season. 85-86 uh, marks the breakout year for Russ Cortnell. 73 games played, 22 goals, 38 assists for 60 points. And it feels like Russ Cortnell's finally, you know, living up to some of that potential. But... Being Toronto, the criticism will always sort of be there. 86-87, 65 games played for Jeff Cortnell. 13 goals, 23 assists, 36 points. And this is at a time where they have guys like Ray Bork and Cam Neely. And Jeff Cortnell is just kind of another winger. He's just sort of there. 86-87 uh, is different for us. He plays 79 games, 29 goals, 44 assists, 73 points. Russ Cortnell is a star. He's arrived. Everything's great. Uh, 87, 88, Jeff Cortnell's the first of the two brothers to get traded. He plays 62 games with Boston, 32 goals, 26 assists for 58 points. And, uh, I'm, I'm sure the idea was, well, um, we're, we're, we're going for it. And, uh, so he, he was traded with Bill Ranford for Andy Moog. So 87, 88 ends with him in Edmonton. He plays 12 games, four goals, four assists, eight points. He wins the Stanley Cup, a Stanley Cup final against the Boston Bruins that had traded him in March. So with with Ranford now as an Oiler, and that'll come back to sting the Bruins in 1990, um, the, the Moog deal uh, ends up kind of stinging a little bit. I mean, Moog played really well for Boston, but losing Ranford. Anyways, 87-88, 65 games played for Russ Cortnell, 23 goals, 26 assists, 49 points for him. He stays in Toronto all year. But his trade is coming. 88-89, uh, Jeff Cortnell uh, signs on with the, um, the the Washington Capitals, plays 79 games that first year, 42 goals, 38 assists for 80 points. That's the only time he gets 40 goals in his career. It's the only time any Cortnell has 40 goals in a season. Um, whereas Russ Cortnell is part of a rather large trade. 88-89, nine games, one goal, one assist, so slow start. And they traded him for John Cordick and a draft pick. Yeah, that was a trade that was very controversial at the time. Uh, Cordick, one of the toughest guys in the NHL. Yes, people who watched hockey back then. There are some who will say he was the toughest. But then Russ Cortnell went on to play 64 games, get 22 goals, 17 assists, 39 points for the Montreal Canadiens. So not only does Toronto trade Russ Cortnell, they trade him to the Montreal Canadiens. Um, 89-90... Still in Washington, 80 games played, 35 goals, 39 assists, 74 points. And depending on who you ask, uh, Ross Cortnell asked to be traded. 
So following that season, July 13th of 1990, he is traded to the St. Louis Blues for Peter Zezel and Mike Lawler. And he doesn't last very long in St. Louis, but we'll get to that. 89-90 with the Montreal Canadiens. Ross Courtnell plays 80 games, 27 goals, 32 assists, 59 points. Good season for Russ. You want to, okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, all right. 90-91, Jeff Courtnell uh, plays in St. Louis. He only plays 66 games, 27 goals, 30 assists, 57 points. He is then traded to the Vancouver Canucks with uh, Robert Dirk, Sergio Momesso, and Cliff Ronning, and going the other way, Dan Quinn and Garth Butcher. The St. Louis Blues were going for it. They felt that they they had a chance to, to compete for a Stanley Cup that year. They were in really good shape, and that Dan Quinn and Garth Butcher would put them over the top. What St. Louis may not have realized was that Garth Butcher had played a lot of hockey and a lot of tough minutes in, in Vancouver, and uh, he didn't really give them exactly what they wanted. Uh, so Jeff Cortnell plays 11 games in Vancouver, six goals, two assists for him for eight points. On the other side of the ledger, 79 games played for Russ Cortnell, still in Montreal, uh, 26 goals, 50 assists, 76 points. So to this stage, when you look at them head to head, Russ really is the more productive of the two brothers, 100%. Uh, but once he gets to Vancouver, Jeff Cortnell starts to change the narrative a bit. Jeff Cortnell was kind of an unknown. Uh, to a lot of Vancouver fans coming in from St. Louis. And though he had the 40-goal season with Washington, there re really wasn't a whole lot of uh, excitement around around Courtnell. Running somewhat, because running was, was seen more as... Well, I mean, Courtnell was local too, but running, there was there was a lot... Okay, maybe it was just me. 91-92, 70 games played for, for Jeff Courtnell. 23 goals, 34 assists, 57 points. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I think the 91-92 Canucks were the best Canucks team they ever had. 91-92 um, is, is a year that uh, Russ misses a lot of games. He only plays 27. 7 goals, 14 assists, 21 points in the 27 games he plays. And uh, that's his last year with Montreal. He gets traded to the Minnesota North Stars on August 21st of 1992 for Brian Bellows. Who is not in my Hall of Fame, but eventually probably gets there. Now, while Russ is joining his third team, uh, Jeff goes on in 92-93 to play 84 games for Vancouver. 31 goals, 46 assists, 77 points. And Vancouver fans know how good Jeff Cortnell is. And I was a huge fan of Jeff Cortnell. Um, Russ Cortnell, now with the Minnesota North Stars. There's a little asterisk next to it because that first year he was with the Minnesota North Stars. 84 games played. 36 goals, 43 assists, 79 points. Very, very close between the two brothers in points. Jeff had a few more penalty minutes than did Russ, though. I didn't put the penalty minutes on the board season by season because then we kind of run out of board, right? 93-94, um, this is, of course, the year the Canucks go to the Stanley Cup Final. 82 games played, 26 goals, 44 assists, 70 points. And in the best of seven first round against Calgary, uh, he scores the, the huge game winner. Uh, that really helps. Well, there were three overtime winners in that series. Games 5, 6, and 7. Vancouver won all three in overtime. And Jeff Cortnell's was, I believe, game 6. And it was a fantastic shot. Now, 93-94 is a pretty darn good season for Russ as well. He plays 84 games in Dallas. So that's after the relocation. 23 goals, 57 assists for 80 points. So uh, both Cortnell brothers playing pretty darn well. Now, 94-95. The Canucks start to kind of trend down. And they were trending down the 93-94 season. The Stanley Cup final run covered up for that. 94-95, uh, Jeff plays 45 games, 16 goals, 18 assists for 34 points. And what happened that year? Why am I wearing a Canucks jersey? Because after 32 games in Dallas for Russ in 94-95, where he has 7 goals and 10 assists, um, he is traded to the Vancouver Canucks. Russ and Jeff are playing together. I was so excited. Uh, he was traded for Greg Adams and Dan Kessa. Now, I was upset to see Greg Adams go, but I was kind of excited to see Russ Cortnell come in. I'm like, I can't wait to see the Cortnells together. Russ Cortnell loves playing on the same team as his brother. 13 games, 4 goals, 14 assists, 18 points. Uh, the Canucks would go out in the second round that year. Uh, I remember they knocked out the Blues in the first round, and then the second round they got knocked out. I believe that was Chicago that year. And um, the, the Canucks let 
George Je or Jeff Cortnell go. So they bring in Russ Cortnell. I get all excited because I'm going to see the Russ see the Cortnells to play together, and it's 13 regular season games, and then it's it's over because Jeff signs with St. Louis. Uh, he would play 69 games in St. Louis that first year, 24 goals, 16 assists for 40 points. Uh, whereas Russ, who's still in Vancouver, 81 games, 26 goals, 39 assists, 65 points. I always thought Vancouver lowballed Jeff, and I always wondered how Russ felt about that. I'm playing on a team that just lowballed my brother. 96-97, uh, uh, Jeff Cortnell plays 82 games, 17 goals, 40 assists, 57 points. Whereas in Vancouver, Russ plays 47 games, 9 goals, 19 assists, 28 points, and then he's traded to the Rangers. It's stupid. Uh, he's traded with Esa Tikkanen for, for Namchinov and Brian Noonan. So now that we've got... Uh, Mike Keenan, you had to have Noonan. We kept waiting for Matteau as well, but Brian Noonan has to be on a team coached by Mike Keenan, and therefore we lost Russ Cortnell. He goes to New York. He scores two goals and five assists for seven points in 14 games as a member of the Rangers, and um, and then he's an unrestricted free agent that summer. Um, this is one of those low points for me as a, as a Canuck fan where it was hard to, to watch and cheer for the team. Uh, 97, 98, Jeff, uh, with the St. Louis Blues still plays 79 games, 31 goals, 31 assists for 62 points. And we don't know at the time that's his last full season in the NHL. Um, we're now with the LA Kings, Russ Cortnell plays 58 games, 12 goals, six assists, 18 points. When Russ's offense left, it was just gone. Um, it was, it was stunning to watch him in LA and, and just see how quickly that offense left him. Uh, 98, 99. Jeff Cortnell starts dealing with concussions. Big concussion problems. Plays 24 games, misses the whole second half of the season for the Blues. Five goals, seven assists, 12 points. 98-99 uh, is the last year in the league for Russ Cortnell. He plays 57 games for LA. Six goals, 13 assists for 19 points. Jeff Cortnell would play in 99-2000, but he only plays six games. Has two goals and two assists that year. Finishes his career with 1,049 games played. 367 goals, 432 assists, and 799 points. Yeah, I really wanted him to get 800 points. Uh, I was frustrated that he didn't get 800 points. Um, on the Russ Cortnell side of the board, you'll notice 1,029 games, 297 goals, 447 assists, 744 points. So Jeff Cortnell was undrafted, the older of the two brothers, ends up playing 20 more games and getting 55 more points. Well, what's remarkable to me with these guys is how similar their careers were, how similar their numbers were, and, you know, just the fact that Jeff does kind of end up being the better of the two brothers. It's all a matter of conjecture, though, right? Um, all opinion. 1,465 penalty minutes in the career of Jeff Cortnell, 557 career penalty minutes for Russ. So even though they were built very similarly, uh, Jeff was the far more physical of the two and far more willing to drop the gloves. Uh, playoffs, 156 games played in the playoffs for Jeff, 39 goals, 70 assists for 109 points. Whereas Russ Cortnell, 129 games played, 39 goals, 44 assists, 83 points for Russ Cortnell. So I felt that if I was going to put one in, I kind of had to put both in my Hall of Fame to join the other players. And I thought this would be kind of a fun way to do it, looking at both careers at the same time. They got traded. Uh, they they put themselves into uh, situations where they succeeded, where it was unexpected. Um, and and for Russ, you know, that trade for John Cordick, I remember. I I remember the the furor over that trade. Uh, because again, Cordick, it's not like it's not like Cordick had shown that he had any kind of offensive upside as an NHLer. Uh, he was he was just purely muscle. That's what you were getting. And Jeff was seen as being a good young player and the kind that the Leafs should build around. So I remember that, and I remember the, the Canucks deal as being one of the biggest mistakes that St. Louis ever made. So uh, both of them were, were in one, one-sided trades, and they were on the positive side in each case. There you go. Sort of a fun way to do it, so welcome them to the Hall of Fame. Um, Bear won't let me put her down. You'll notice she's clinging on for... You don't need to cling on for dear life. I'm not going to drop you, I promise. Anyways, uh, so while she holds on, thank you guys so much for all your support as well and for holding on to the channel. Uh, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section before below. I think 90% of the comments are going to be about bear. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.